Today we're here to discuss size. Giggity! But seriously though, I've been into huge phones since early 2017, starting out with the OnePlus 5, and then later in 2018 when the 10s Max came out, I was convinced to switch back to iPhone, and I've been enjoying this really gigantic form factor since then. But I don't know, recently I think I got off the huge phone high because I began to get a bit exhausted with the hugeness of my 6.5 inch iPhone 11 Pro Max. And yes, I am well aware this is a very first world problem, you know, imagine, oh my my iPhone 11 Pro Max is just too big, like, oh, woe is the world. I get it, it seems like a trifling issue, but you have to remember, tech is my job, you know? I invest in technology products and cover them to, you know, inform you about which form factor or which device is right for you, so this is a, you know, analytical overview. It's not just me about how my phone is too big. And all this pushed me to make a sort of middle of the night decision to upgrade my line and begin financing a regular 5.8 inch 11 Pro in a different color variant. I'm a sucker for the silver. And after just a few days of using this smaller device, I have to say I'm very satisfied with my experience and I'm very happy that I made the decision to downsize and I want to get into why. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. And if you are a recurring viewer, go ahead and click the bell icon and enable all notifications. It does help the channel out a lot. Okay, so first up, let's talk about handset weight. And the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the absolute unit chonky boy that it is, comes in at around half a pound, which is quite substantial for a smartphone if you ask me. And it makes sense, I mean, it's made out of fine materials like stainless steel and matte glass, and it's already a pretty big phone. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, you do get used to the weight after months of ownership. I certainly did, and I think I'm almost on month nine of owning this phone. But at the same time, I don't know, I just got kind of sick of pulling it out of my pocket and up and off tables, especially in the morning when my already noodle arms, the muscles within them weren't quite warmed up. I would just wanna check my phone and I'd just be like, Ugh. So, you know, maybe I'm weak, but I think that the weight may have been the biggest contributing factor to me realizing just how big and hefty this phone is. Meanwhile, while the regular iPhone 11 Pro is just a third of a pound and exactly 38 grams lighter than its bigger brother, and it definitely makes a difference. And I've noticed that my hands and my wrists get less fatigued when I use this phone for a long period, especially with one hand, and pulling it out of my pocket no longer takes a lot of extra effort. And speaking of pockets, I can now wear shorts during the summer without having my pants sag as much. I mean, this is an issue. I have like, you know, Adidas, of course, track shorts, and they're looser, and my 11 Pro Max would just really sag one side of my pants. Not a fun time, but with this phone, you know, it being 38 grams lighter, things feel a bit more balanced. The other great thing about the 11 Pro besides its lighter weight is its compact size. And this phone is not tiny by any means, but the beautiful thing about it is you can actually one hand it. And this is a feature I've been missing since I switched to the OnePlus 5 in early 2017 from my tic tac of a phone, the iPhone 5S. And with that said, now I can type and dial and scroll and just pretty much operate my phone with one hand once again, while having the other hand occupied, you know, doing something else. That sounds wrong, but you know what I mean? Like being able to actually multitask in real life now without having both of my hands on deck to use my Pro Max is super convenient if you ask me. And yeah, that pretty much sums up why it's nice to use the regular 11 Pro in 2020. It's pretty simple. It's smaller and more compact, and I think for many, more comfortable to use. But with everything said, once again, um, there has to be caveats switching to the smaller phone, right? And I have to admit, the 11 Pro Max's display is amazing for YouTube media consumption and media consumption in general, and also it accommodates a nice big keyboard, which is something I'm a huge fan of. And having a bigger display is generally better for both of these aspects or features or tasks that I just mentioned. There's also about a thousand milliamp hour battery capacity disparity between these two. Obviously, this has the smaller battery around 3000 milliamp hours, whereas this phone has a battery capacity capacity of around 4,000 milliamp hours. 
And from what I've experienced, while yeah, I do miss the large display in some of these aforementioned aspects, I've surprisingly found that the 5.8 inch display on my 11 Pro can accommodate a similar experience, especially while typing, which is again, a big deal for me. And I'm still very comfortable doing so. I don't feel cramped at all, like I did once again with my iPhone 5S and smaller phones that I had before. Now, of course, this is just my opinion, you know, my own subjective experience, and I obviously recommend, you know, once they reopen, going to the store, particularly an Apple store or a Best Buy to get a better feel as to what these sizes are actually like side by side. One thing I will say though is if you have eye trouble, whether you're born with it or you're just getting older, I wouldn't recommend sizing down. I mean, the bigger the display, the better, especially if you can turn up scaling. Just ask my middle-aged dad, he would never use something smaller than his current 10s Max. And then in regard to battery life, you'd think I'd see a substantial dip in screen on time, but that is not the case at all. Um, I haven't changed my habits, in fact, in terms of intermittent charging and just using it throughout the day. I am a heavy user and I have not seen that big of an impact. Sure, it doesn't perform as well, but in my usage case, it doesn't really make a difference for me because once again, I do intermittently charge, you know, whether I just place it on my wireless charging mat for a few minutes or if I like plug it into my car for CarPlay. And some days I don't do that at all and even so I'm not noticing any poor battery performance it still gets me through the day as a heavy user and still keeps me up at night until like four or five in the morning on TikTok here which is just ridiculous but yeah long story short I thought I would see a dip in battery life but it's really not significant and if you want the smaller compact size and the lighter weight it's definitely worth a bit less screen on time in my opinion one thing I did notice is, is that the speaker quality between the two isn't quite the same here. While I think the speaker drivers themselves are of a similar standard and technology, the fact that this phone is bigger, I think makes the sound sound fuller and less like a tin can. I'll just show you it real quick here. So here's the 11 Pro. And here's the 11 Pro Max. So like not the biggest difference, but a big enough difference to, you know, audibly notice, I think. But it doesn't really make a big difference to me because I always have my AirPods in. So even if the speaker quality here is 85% of what it is with the bigger phone, I'm perfectly fine with that. And before I get to my conclusion here or wrap up my points, I wanna quickly do a gaming demo because somebody had requested this specifically with the iPhone 11 and I'm happy to oblige here. So we'll open um, up a Minecraft world, the same one here created on March the 6th. And while the bigger display on the 11 Pro Max makes the gaming experience nicer, you know, more immersive, I have to say, even at 5.8 inches, this is still very enjoyable. It's not as huge, but it's also not as heavy and it's less fatiguing once again to game with this for a while. You know, and once again, I'm not saying that the Pro Max isn't for anybody. If you like big phones and phablets and stuff like that, the more power to you. I was in that boat for years, but yeah, I'm very much satisfied with this. This phone is not small once again by any means and can accommodate a very nice gaming experience. So long story long, if you have the Max size or even the plus size iPhone right now, and you're sort of feeling unhappy about the form factor, give the regular 5.8 inch size a go. Chances are you'll be really satisfied with it and trust me, there aren't too many drawbacks with it. And also remember, at the end of the day, size doesn't really matter because functionality, utility, and comfortability are all that's important. <laughs> And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.